Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. So today we're doing pox walkers in three different styles. We're doing contrast, we're doing slap chop, and we are doing, for want of a better word, dip wash style, which is kind of my usual painting style. Why are we doing this? So I've got a future project coming up, it's not 40K, and I wanted to experiment, do something different. So I've bought a load of Games Workshop contrast paints, some of which we're using today in this video, and I thought, right, I'll have a play on some experimental models. And a follower of the channel asked, how would you paint pox walkers? Because uh, I'm not planning to do any for the Death Guard army. And I thought, right, this is an opportunity to show someone how I would paint pox walkers to match my Death Guard and also experiment with those new paints. Great fun thing to do. Why not? So we've undercoated in three different ways. So in three little units of three. Um, because, again, we can demonstrate the three different styles. So we've gone Wraithbone, we've gone the normal lead belt, and we've done black, and we'll talk about that later. There'll also be a full paint list at the end, and there's another reason for that. So stick around and you'll see why I've listed all the paints together, because there's another reason that separates all three of these styles. So, the pure contrast style. Undercoat Wraithbone Spray, because that's what's recommended, and that gives the tones and highlights, and that's what makes this paint work. So, Layering the paint on, we've done the flesh, we're going to do the flesh and all over the tentacles and things. And then we're moving on to a yellow on the trousers. Now the colour doesn't really matter. The only reason I've used yellow rather than the box art, which is orange, is I didn't buy an orange because I don't need that for my future technique. And that's important to recognise that your models paint them your colour you want if you fancy it, or stick along if you want to. Now contrast paints, one thing I noticed, you need to give them a really, really good shake. Because some of these separate quite badly, and that residue is in the bottom, and clearly that must be needed for the paint. So really do make sure you check that out and you've shaken it properly. So we're doing some green, really, to pull the Death Guard kind of thing in. We've done a colour that's equivalent to Death Guard green. And now we're working on the leathers and things. Now, as you can see on here, I'm being very, very careful when I've put those flesh colours on and the stages were going not to cross over onto the next area. So even though contrast is a fast technique, more on that later, um, you've got to be really careful where the paint is going because if you put the paint onto a section you've got to work on later, it is going to impact what you put on there. So it's a beginner technique in terms of speed, but you've got to be super careful. So actually it's quite a fiddly technique for a beginner painter to really get into, unless you've got a very steady hand. Just one thing I've noticed. So when you're doing it, try and cover all the area you need to cover, go right up to the lines almost for where you're going to put the next layer, but try not to cross over. Now here's an interesting one. This is a technique I will definitely be taking on to future models. The tentacles that are growing out of these models we've done with the skin color, and I've stopped halfway up those tentacles and now we're putting this major's purple layer on to the end of the tentacles to make it look slightly more demonic and possessed and I do this through wet blending on my normal models which takes not too long but it's a definitely a fiddly technique this was a dream to make those tentacles almost equivalent to a wet blending technique took no time at all so something I'll definitely be taking on to future projects and that's a good thing about experimenting and trying different painting styles. You might pick up things that you really like and you are going to use later on. Like the non-metallic metal stage, you can see on the top of the hammer there we use that grey. I really, really like that, but non-metallic metal isn't something I really do very much. So it's definitely worth playing with paint, having a bit of fun and seeing where the technique goes. And again, I'm not discussing through every single paint that's going down on these models. Obviously it is going to be listed so you can sort of see and follow along if you like. Now, this is a really interesting one. So I do all the kind of details of my models to make it look older, the antique brass, and I'm really impressed with how this Nazdreg yellow goes down for this detailing. You can see on the handle there, I left the handle white because I knew I was going to paint it in this Nazdreg yellow, but I also put the paint down over where I've already put the grey to represent the metal, and just wanted some brass details. Now it does look slightly different to the brass colour that was on that handle, and again that's my point before they will react differently if there's other paint on there. Now, when it's over a whole gray area like that's fine. If it was over some patches, it might give streaks and things. So again, the need to be careful is paramount, I think, with this technique. Going over there with some push jewels and things onto the body. So some yellow onto the push jewels. And again, the yellow on the leg on here looks different to the yellow we've put on the push jewels because it's over the top of the skin. So you can use the same paint on the same model to make a couple of different techniques. And here's the three finished models. Now these took about an hour and 20 minutes to do the three, so fairly quick. Uh, you know, that's not um, not super, super quick. I think I could have sped it up when I get used to using contrast paint, but about an hour and 20, which is pretty good going for three models, and they're to a fairly good standard. There are a couple of faults though, a couple of patches where you can see some of the white showing through, um, and I don't think there's enough depth for me on the model, but we'll do a super quick thing later in the video to fix that. And that's what we'll talk about, the basic painting style, and then how you can advance it later on. So we'll 
talk about that later when all three styles are done. So moving on to the second style, and this is the newly coined term slap chop. This is not a new painting technique. This is a painting technique that's been around for years. Someone on the uh, YouTube forums has just you know, coined the phrase for it, but I've got a friend who's painted in this style for years and years and years, not using contrast paints, but using standard paints, lots of dry brushing, lots of washing, whatever. So it's just a new name for an old technique. It takes a lot of practice to dry brush properly. Dry brushing is not a super simple technique for a beginner, I'd say, because if you put too much paint on your brush, you are gonna put big wads of paint onto the model and almost ruin the point of dry brushing. But go carefully, go slowly. We're building up from a really dark gray, three different highlight layers, as you're seeing here, of that dry brushing to really build the shades and highlights. And then it's back to exactly the same paints we've used in the contrast stage, putting them on in exactly the same way. Now I did the first model flesh, compared them together and went, that's far too dark. Um, and thought, right, I've not done enough of a highlight layer. So I went back on and I redid the final dry brush stage with that off-white color that we've used to bring the colors back up to make it slightly more vibrant because it was coming a little bit dark, but actually, the dark I quite liked, and we'll talk again about that later. So here you can see the two models when I've redone it. The one on the left has just had the original dry brush of the three greys. The one on the right has had an extra dry brush of the off-white and definitely works better. I went back and did that on the second one. So, and then it's, again, you can see here, straight through the contrast paint layers. We're near the end of the technique here. You can see the difference on the trousers and things, and we'll contrast them later. We'll put them together later when we see. So that's the two kind of contrast paint techniques. Now this is how I usually paint. And this is what, for want of a better word, we'll call the dip wash technique. This is all about using normal paints and working on the skin here. So rack our flesh all over the skin and right up the tentacles. Then we move on to the next color, this Death Guard green color. So you'll see the colors are sort of similar, but we're using normal paints, either Games Workshop or Vallejo in these cases, to go on those sections. And again, I'm being Careful again, I've blobbed onto the leg there, you could see for a section, and I've just then used the wet brush to get it off of the leg. So when you're doing this technique, it's not like you can be lazy and messy, but you can afford almost to make mistakes as you go in, and they're easier to kind of fix. But I'm using essentially the same paints we've used on the previous layers, just different colors, obviously, and normal paint. Now, putting the paint on does take a little bit longer, absolutely. The time saving this technique is we're not doing anything to the metallics because we've sprayed it lead belcher so we're leaving the basic metallics you know your um, steel color you would say which is what we did the gray layer on on the contrasts the rest of it is standard painting technique with a standard brush uh, working through those colors working on the bone here and a tip i'd say with the bone always try and paint in the line or direction the bone would grow and uh, yeah work through so um, i'm doing this to match my death guard army so you see a purple which wasn't in the contrast layers but it's reflected in my death guard so we're using that jeans to the purple layer on the insectoid part of these models um, and that's a good way of tying the army together and making it the same as well as painting style exact colors now i have got an orange in my paint collection uh, so i could have matched the box art but i went with the yellow because i want to see the different um, techniques and how they match on the same sort of colors it's important to note that when i'm painting uh, normal paint as you would call it onto the silver you do need a couple of thin layers on some areas and just go back over and build up gradually except for when you're doing these metallic sections so if you're wanting it to like metal at the end and we're layering on here the retributor armor to make some interesting brass areas if you want it on a metallic area you can be a little bit messy because then if you do the wash layer we're going to see later it just makes it look like battered rusty kind of areas so if you've got armor panels and stuff you don't have to be super precise so we're getting to the end of this technique now we're just putting some red into the faces and the eye lenses and those kind of things of the models and really we're on to final detailing before we do the tentacles and then we'll see shortly these models are covered with a lot of little pustules and little bugs and things crawling around so try and pick as many of them up as you can so that uh, it, it really does pick it. if you miss too many it sort of looks a bit odd and look, well looks like you've missed things so try and be a little bit careful when you do there now we talked earlier about the tentacles using the contrast paint method i said how fast it was and how effective i liked it now here is super quick wet blend in on a tentacle on the poxwalker so the arm has got the rakar flesh color on that we started with and i've put a little bit more of that back on we've put screamer pink on the ends of the tentacle and when both colors are wet you literally take your brush and you smudge them together now if you're doing really smooth wet blending on armor panels there's a more you know subtle technique to use but in this case it's just taking those two colors and literally smushing them together with the end of your brush not being too aggressive but getting there and then you might then take you see in here a little bit more screamer pink drop it on the end of the tentacle a little bit more rakar flesh drop it onto the uh, actual arm to make it slightly less stark those contrasts you see here dropping a bit of that rakar flesh on and 
really toning those colors down. And you keep playing with that in nice thin layers, very small amounts of those two different colors going on until you're happy with how they've blended together on the tentacle. Not a super long technique, but the contrast way is much, much faster and gets a fairly similar result. So that may be something I do in the future. Now the dip wash ink stage. Now I'm not dipping into the pot because I find it wastes too much. So I've given it a really, really good stir to make sure it is mixed in. Don't shake it because it puts bubbles in the wash and that gives a problem. I'm just painting onto the model to the consistency and the amount that I want. The more you put on, the darker and grimier the model is going to get. Now here is, at this point, the finished models. So the contrast paints. I've talked about time already. I said these took about an hour and 20 to do all three. Quite happy, but there are patches where that white is showing through really into the recesses, but I'd be perfectly happy to do a whole unit like this. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. The slap chop. Now this took about an hour and 45 minutes, so a lot longer. Here's the darker one, and you know what? I love some of the colors on this, but it is super different to every other model I've got in the army. Really dark, really sort of Blanchett Tui style. And then the standard um, slap chop ones where we did a little bit of extra white, a little bit darker and grimmer than the contrast paints, um, and a bit darker and grimmer than the dip wash. Now dip wash here, the dip wash I use which is the sepia wash, is a real dirty, mucky wash. So actually at this stage, I think these are probably a little bit too grubby, maybe for your army, maybe not. Um, I'd be quite happy to field them like that, but I would want to do some extra work. So we're now gonna do the extra work on these models to bring them up to the point I think, yes, happy with them. And for the contrast, that's one paint and one paint only, a seraphim sepia shade, and we're dropping this into all the recesses. That's all we're doing. Very, very small amounts in some places. I'm using it where the two colors meet, uh, to cover over those areas where we might have got missed white, but really just in the recesses, and then we're done. Now the slap chop one, this is the most difficult part because you can't use the same color you've already used because then you just be putting a layer on it, it just doesn't work. So having to select some bone colors and some things there to do an extra highlight stage was actually quite tricky. But I, all I've done is I've done the bone because I thought the bone was too grimy and almost greeny looking. So I've taken a bone color, a Vallejo bone white, and gone back over there and really light edge highlight up there. And we've also picked some of the skin with a watered down Rakar flesh, which is the color we've used um, on the flesh of the other um, normal painting things, I'll call it, to sort of bring the flesh up and make it slightly more vibrant because I think it was a little bit too dark to match into the rest of my army. So that's one point to know if you are slap chopping, bringing it up to the next level is harder than bringing contrast down a little bit in the recesses. Now onto my normal painting style. This is comfort zone, obviously, because I want to paint the armies. What I'm doing is exactly the same colors we've already used, so there's no need to select different colors, and going back over those areas, covering half to three quarters of each area, so the skin panels in and around there, leaving the wash in the deepest recesses and around the pustules and those things, using exactly the same color, slightly more watered down, thin layers, not a lot of paint going on there, making it almost you know um, translucent kind of thing as you're going over, just to redo the layers. So this is the beauty for me of, of what my normal technique is. You put that wash on and then use the same colors you've already used. And because you've had a dirty wash over it, it builds up gradually and it looks like you've got three or four colors on there, even though you've only just gone and used exactly the same colors used before. And you can see here on the leg, the technique what I'm trying to do is there's areas where I do not go back over that wash layer at all. And then there's areas that we do and we bring it up into those highlight stages. Now here's the only paint we use additionally that we've not used already. And this is picking some of this Majos purple color. Again, a contrast paint. This is one that I've used for a year or two now, actually. Um, so as much as I'm saying I'm experimenting with contrast, I have used some before. We're dropping this onto the skin to give a bruised, manky, dirty skin effect. It's the only real paint, other than the one we're going to talk about in a second, uh, that is any different. Now, because it's Death Guard and it's Poxwalkers, I then went back over the finished model, so I did it over uh, the normal dip wash style you're seeing here, and the other two finished models uh, with the uh, Nurgle Rock, because it is the best paint for uh, Death Guard at all. You can cover up your mistakes with it, you can make it look all grim. It's a fantastic paint colour. So I've taken to the next level one of each model. Now it's comparison time. At the basic stages, I actually think contrast edges it. It's much quicker, an hour and 15 versus an hour and 45. It's a crisper effect. I think the slap chop is more of a difficult painting technique and I think it makes it a bit darker, which if that's what you like, fantastic. It's still a really nice technique. And I think my usual style at this point is a bit dirty. You could change that by doing a seraphim sepia wash, less of a dirty wash, but I would always push my technique to this next level. Now with the next stages, again, all three give really Really nice effects actually. I think this will come down to two things. Whether you enjoy the technique, 
which if I'm honest, I don't enjoy the slap chop technique. I didn't enjoy all that dry brushing. Um, it's not something I really like, particularly do. Uh, I enjoyed the contrast. I like the finish effect. I think it's a really nice way of painting. I will definitely be contrast painting in the future. Um, it's a simple technique, you know, just that sepia shade at the end. As I said before, the, the slap chop stage, although the finished effect is definitely better um, than the kind of pre-effect, the difficulty is you've got to almost work to select the paint you're going to do the highlight layer with because you know the paints are totally different and you can't just go back over a contrast whereas my technique using the same paints for the start and then the wash and then after using the same paints again so the paint selection is easier and um, for me it's quicker it gives a much nicer final effect I think than either of the other two but any of these three techniques would be great I think it comes down to whether you enjoy the technique the thing that might make you change your mind is the cost of these techniques so contrast paint is more expensive than standard paints we know this especially from games workshop now the contrast section you use the same paint and then a seraphim sepia and you're done the slap chop stage, you have to use the three paints before you start putting the contrast on. And then in my case, I use then three paints after the contrast went on. So there's six additional paints you've got to put into that painting process, which so is definitely the most expensive painting technique. If that's not a worry and you like the technique, go for it. Um, for me, I think I'll be sticking overall for my standard paint technique. But couldn't let the video end without an honourable mention to this guy. The one I didn't dry brush up enough on the slap chop technique has turned out to be a bland shit to grim dark masterpiece. Love it. Would I want a whole army like it? No. But look at that leather. I think it's brilliant. Um, you may see this style again. Like, comment, subscribe. If you enjoyed all that, I'll see you in another video.